the man that was once described by Outside Magazine as a truant on a salary, Mr. Uh, Mr. Martin Zemitis, <laughs> but uh, a, a, a designer that really did know what he was doing, even though he, he did get some time off to test his products. In, 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 in tents, uh, the weak link uh, is, is what destroys a tent. And so the idea is you have a certain amount of weight and you have a certain amount of resources. And what you want to do is you just want to make sure there are no weak links. Um, one, of, one of my pet peeves is uh, people using a, a 1300, uh, a webbing that has a 1300 pound uh, tear strength uh, and they sew it to a fabric that has a five uh, uh, you know, pound tear strength. It just doesn't make any sense, and, uh, and that's where you're using your resources uh, in an inefficient manner because you've got this really heavy webbing and you've got this lightweight fabric, and what you need to do is you need to uh, balance that and then use that extra weight, either save it or use it somewhere else to strengthen up uh, a, another member that's not quite as strong. Talk to me like the techie. In other words, I've heard you talk about the specific things. It's got to be the right thread. It's got to be the right zipper, the right mm -hmm. looping, the right everything. And I've heard you talk say that it's this much in diameter and et cetera. Tell me about those things. Um, a good example would be uh, uh, having uh, on a tent, for example, where you have a grommet tab where you, the end of the pole goes into it. A lot of people will put these nice, big, thick, heavy webbings on there. and. It's, it's, it looks good, uh, it uh, looks durable. The problem is that you're uh, applying this very heavy material against a very lightweight fabric. And what you do is you end up getting hinging, you end up wearing the edges of the fabric, and it actually turns out to be a, a cause of f a possible failure point, and it's actually a, a weakness to the whole structure. Plus, you can take the weight that you have in that grommet tab, and you can apply it somewhere else to help make the whole structure stronger. So having uh, so having something look durable, uh, like a, a big heavy grommet tab, uh, can actually be a, a point of, of weakness. So the idea is to match the different materials so that you don't have any stress points. And in addition to that, you have to sew it properly. You can't just put a bar tack on the webbing. You have to sew across it onto the fabric. And then this way you keep the hinging down uh, and then you end up uh, having less stress on the fabric. And the little details like that, or even the type of webbing, a lot of people use the wrong type of webbing on, on, on when they attach their fly sheet to, to the tent body. So when the wind, especially a buffeting wind, it ends up, uh, the fly uh, attachment system ends up loosening up because of the wrong webbing, and then the whole product fails. So, so you can have an expedition tent that doesn't work at all if it's got the wrong webbing or it's not sewn right. And so you can't just call it a, a expedition tent. You actually have to work, on, work all these details out and match the different, the pole diameter, the sewing, the seam construction materials, so you don't have any weak links. And the idea is that the whole structure fails all at once, and then you've sort of reached, you, you, you've succeeded in the, in the sense that you've made the strongest possible structure. And imagine trying to build a house that weighs 10 pounds that withstand 100, 120 mile an hour winds. It's pretty difficult to do. Eventually, with enough snow and enough wind, the product will collapse. But the idea is that by applying the materials properly, you'll la have it last as long as possible. And in, 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 with the tensile structures, it's, very, it's all about the details. You know, the tent, the shock cord, the, the, the pole diameter, the, the, pole, uh, th the tube thickness, the alloy, the, uh, the, you know, the yield strength, all those things. Um, you know, er every one of those details, when it's very, very windy and um, uh, the conditions are very serious, all those little details count. And it's very easy to uh, try and save money or uh, trying to use the wrong stitch or, or, or use the wrong stitch length or use fabrics that aren't calendared properly. Um, it, it's very enticing to, to save you know, a little bit of money here and there, but if you want to make a product that really lasts and works when you need it the most, um, you, know, the, the, that you, you need to go to that extra length and, and worry about those details. So one of the things I liked about uh, working uh, in, in the industry and um, you know, for these high-end brands is that uh, they, they always wanted to do better and they always wanted to make uh, structures that uh, uh, were, 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 you know, each year they wanted to improve and that sort of set the bar higher and higher over the years. So tents got lighter, they got stronger and, um, you know, it benefited everybody and um, considering that's your house in the mountains, it's very important. I mean, Phil Scott had a great saying, he said the, the heaviest tent in the world is a lightweight tent that failed. 
talk to me like the techie. In other words, I've heard you talk about the specific things. It's got to be the right thread. It's got to be the right zipper, the right mm -hmm. looping, the right everything. And I've heard you talk say that it's this much in diameter and et cetera. Tell me about those things. I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. 